Hello, I'm Max Sedakert, the founder of Setopo. Welcome to this tutorial on how to use Setopo, Revit and Enscape together to create really amazing visualizations like this with just a few clicks of a button and no additional effort and the end results are something you've probably never seen before. So the result is, is something like this. We have uh, forests that are utterly realistic and uh, all this with no additional effort and well the trees are actually the height they're supposed to be there in the place approximately the places where they're supposed to be and species are even correct approximately so we get unprecedented realism in in whatever solar studies uh, we we want to use this data for and uh, also like this is something you can make in the very beginning of a project before committing to anything really because it takes takes just as much effort as anything else from out of setup so practically practically no effort all right but uh, this is a tutorial so how do we get this this amazing end result well first of all of course you have to download something from setup and for that purpose we have a, an area here pre-selected and you then download a file this uh, tutorial is a little bit more in-depth uh, in the Enscape side of things here, so we're not going to go very deep into how you actually use Setup or, or Revit. So if that's something you're not yet familiar with, then I really suggest you check the other tutorials before, before starting with this one. But in any case, after downloading a file to Revit, we then open it in Revit using the plugin, and the result is this but uh, the result for you might not be like this because you have to do something else first and that is that you have to change this setting from direct shape trees here to a family configuration and now the question is how do you get a family configuration and in this case how do you get the Enscape family configuration and what does the family configuration even do well the family configuration uh, tells the loader set up a loader here the plugin how to map trees defined by Setopo into trees defined here in Revit or any other family for that matter. And the result is that we get actually families here instead of direct shapes. So you have here a five meters pine. This is a, yeah, this is some kind of pine and it is uh, actually an unknown tree here and it's 20 meters high. So how do you get all of these? Well, that's exactly what the with the configuration file does. So let's go ahead and look a little bit at this Enscape configuration file here. So to do that, just click the tree configuration folder button, which opens up this folder, which you should have on your computer. And there is the Enscape.json file. There's also a handy readme, which you can use to actually uh, learn all the details about configuring these configuration files. And you can just create a new file here. For example, if I copy the test JSON here, you see that we immediately have a test dash copy in our menu here. So uh, it's really simple to use. But let's go ahead and check this Enscape.json file here. So I'm just going to open it up in Notepad++ here, which is an editor I've used, but you can use any text editor really. But it is preferred to use something other than maybe Word, something that has a little bit more of a JSON capabilities to syntax highlighting autocomplete that kind of things makes your life a lot easier and uh, less error prone so we have this configuration file and uh, it looks a little bit long it is uh, almost 200 lines of what looks like code but it is really quite simple and in the, normally you wouldn't need to configure this very much you can probably use things that we have defined like this predefined enscape.json file and maybe tweak a parameter or two here so you don't need really need to touch all of this unless you want to of course I'm just gonna really briefly scroll over some of the central features here and one is this um, the first one here libraries it's a list of paths and if we actually open up this thing again we're gonna see that there is a folder here called Enscape families and in, in that one I have put a lot of families that we're gonna use in this so you could uh, 
make your own family folder and put whatever families you want there and then refer to them from this config file. And then I have a lot of different well, definitions here, but let's return to those a little bit later. For now, let's check this rules section here. And this is really the, like the meat of what this config file does. So we have a rule here, and the rule is composed of set up a name section and a Revit section. And what it does is that it maps these set up of the names. So if set up tells you that, or tells the plugin that, hey, there is a pine one here, then that's gonna trigger this rule. And uh, what's it gonna do with that? Well, it uses one of these sub rules here to place, for example, a conifers tree 12 pine. And the end result is that we get a conifers tree 12 pine here in the model. And uh, that's that's all, all it does. And as you can you can probably already see the flexibility here that you can define any library any library you want uh, in this place here so it is not just Enscape's built-in libraries but you can use this without Enscape for families of any kind of any kind of pipe you you can imagine and uh, yeah that's that's it and um, the way we make this a little bit easier with multiple types of trees like there's a special section for oaks a section for beaches to uh, to reduce somewhat the copy paste copy pastiness of this this configuration file we use different things like base types here macros and variable expressions to make all of this a bit more manageable but yeah that's that's really all you need once you have this inscape.json file and you have a folder with your with your families then every time you import something from setup you can just choose choose this setting here and that's what you're gonna what's going to be used when you actually import import things so it's really simple and uh, one thing i also want to mention at this point is this which is also fairly new no groups is what i have here and uh, that is a lot faster than using groups but if you want to um, be able to for example select all the pines or something like this very easily then you could use uh, one of the group options here but that will make importing your file into Revit a lot slower so usually I would recommend you stick to no groups but uh, yeah that's it and the end result is, is um, you just go to the Enscape tab and press the button to, to get your Enscape view and that's really all, all you need to do to, to get this incredible result. All right, so now we're here in, in Enscape again, and we can check one thing that as we specified the delta to be five, and as we noticed in, in Revit here, if we click this tree, it shows us that the setup has created a five, a 10, a 15, and a 20 meter version of this tree. And this is something we can clearly see here in Enscape if we, if we go a little bit closer, like here. Mm, it might not be immediately obvious uh, look at this. even this looks pretty nice but uh, yeah well here for example these two trees are clearly the same type of tree and they're exactly the same height and this is also a five meter pine here but this is not probably the the reality of these trees here so if you want ultimate realism you might want to decrease this delta setting here so if we check here, we have delta five. So let's just check one of these rules. How does it work exactly now? So the first rule here, which triggers on pines and contorta trees, which are only available in Sweden. Well, it will trigger one of these rules, but how does it know which rule to trigger? Well, we see we have a base type, exterior and interior. So let's check base type. It refers to one of these base types. And we have defined interior and exterior base types. If we check the exterior one first, you see it defines a parameter list and a selection criteria. And in this case, the selection criteria is for the exterior one, relation is not forest interior. And for the interior one, it is of course, relation is forest interior. Relation is a parameter that comes with all of the trees that are generated by setup and it tells you whether a tree is inside the forest, on the edge of a forest, or outside a forest. 
And based on that, we have decided here to either use this tree or that tree, because this one is more of an, uh, a, a pine that is not doing very well, <laughs> because it's in the middle of a forest, and this one is more of a lush pine that is doing quite nicely in the exterior. Right. And uh, so what will happen is that this base type exterior just means that all of this here will be all of this stuff will get copy pasted here when this thing is run. So that what what you just had there is completely equivalent to, to it looking like this. And this actually makes it a bit easier for us to see what's happening here. So when it's, once it comes here, it will check the selection criteria for this one and the selection criteria for the other one. And it will then choose the one that matches this criteria. What then happens is that it executes all the parameters, evaluates them, and evaluates also this variant name expression. And this will evaluate then to, for example, pine, b, and a height, which is a macro, which we have defined up here. And the macro here just gets copy pasted again. So we could just take this, all of this, and just put it in there and there. And you can see why these macros are quite useful to reduce the duplication of the code. But in any case, we can now see this variant name expression. So pine, b, and then the larger number of the minimum height, which was one of the variables we defined up here. So that's five currently. So all trees will be at least five meters. And then we have the floor, so rounding down of the height. And here height is now the parameter from set all. So for example, let's say it's 20.6 meters. 20.6 feet because uh, all the data that comes from setup here is in feet because we're in Revit. Then we use this built-in conversion factor to convert the feet into meters. Then we divide by our delta parameter, which is currently five meters. And now we round this down, so we get something like one. And then we multiply again by five to get five. So here we get, for example, for one of these small trees, we get five meters to the name. And the same for the height. So we get a tree which is a pine 12 and it gets a height of 5 and a name pine b 5 meters. That's uh, really all, the, all that happens here. And um, that's what happens to all the trees here. But now let's try something if we want more realism. Let's, let's decrease the minimum height to 3 meters and let's increase the delta to, decrease the delta to just 1 meter. Let's save the file. Let's close this one because Enscape doesn't really like refreshing properly if you like delete the entire model and reload it. So let's go ahead and reload the model. Oh, it's actually complaining that there is something that can't be parsed in our JSON. And let's see if we can find it quickly here. It's probably the name expression. Oh yeah, we're missing a comma here. There we go. A comma there, and now it should all be good. And now we get this little warning here that a total of 265 new sim family symbols will be generated. Your variant name expression are perhaps missing some form of rounding. So Setup is warning us that we're going to create a lot of new families symbols and that this might not be what we intended, but in this case actually it is exactly what we intended. All right, and here we have the resulting file. Let's go to the tree view to just check it out. And now indeed if we click this little tree, I see that we have pines from 5 to 25. And I think actually the 5 uh, limit here is because in setup we had the minimum height of all trees as 5. So there won't be any trees smaller than 5 in this model. Anyways, let's go to Enscape again and see how this looks. All right, here we have our new thing. And let's go check those two trees that we were just comparing earlier. And as we can see now, they're not anymore exactly the same size. The pine is clearly a little bit higher. This one is smaller, that one is a little bit bigger. And there we have, I think, an even smaller one. So all in all, everything now looks even more realistic than it did before. Of course, this comes at some processing cost of having even more models here in the, uh, in the file, but that's 
should be something should be quite manageable in any case on a good computer but yeah that's it that's uh, that's I think all all that this tutorial will uh, will go through in this in this type of time if you have any questions feel free to contact and ask about this feature and um, be sure to check the readme that's included in your set up a loader folder for nitty gritty details about how to perform all of these these imports and um, i hope you have some amazing visualizations using this feature